Okay, so I had a recording of me talking about this originally, but I decided to archive it since I was just reiterating certain points too many times to my liking. And the second time that I tried it, it was having some echoing, but uh, hopefully that's fixed. So as you saw by the title, I don't necessarily care for Red Dead Redemption's price, and I don't think anyone who already has Red Dead Redemption should care about buying the PS4 version of Red Dead. Now, as some of you may have seen already, Red Dead Redemption was just announced to come to PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch pretty soon, in about a week actually. This has caused a lot of discussion against the port, being how late it is to the party, the content being pretty much only single player oriented, as well as the price point, that being 50 bucks. And honestly, I blame much of the community on this, at least in some form. The reason that I blame the community for this negative press is because the community is the reason that there was confusion spurring into Red Dead Redemption will have a remake slash remaster without any concrete evidence to support this. Unlike the leaked gameplay and build of GTA 6, there was no physical evidence of this build for Red Dead Redemption. Yes, the achievements were updated and there was a redesign to the logo, but there was nothing that would hint at any gameplay enhancements nor any updates to the visuals of the game. Busy warned the community on this by stating that a remaster slash remake makes too much sense, and especially given the GTA Definitive Edition, I'd remain cautious in some aspects. Now, playing Devil's Advocate, Rockstar has a lot of explaining to do in terms of why the hell a PS4 version of the game took this long to finally release, let alone on PC, which hasn't even been announced yet, and Rockstar has also been dodging it. This game is 13 fucking years old. And I've seen the prototype series get an under the radar release for PS4. And that game got little attention in comparison to this highly praised title. Along with this, there isn't anything that is being elaborated on, such as the frame rate and or resolution of the game. And there were talks of the $50 price point being defended by Rockstar due to commercial norms or something along those lines. Well the funny thing is, that I actually went to an inflation calculator to see how the current pricing of Red Dead Redemption is and its DLC on Xbox in comparison to what we're going to get for PS4 and Switch. And as it turns out, the game would sell for 56 bucks, which is oddly similar to what you will have to pay for the announced versions with tax. So I guess they're basing it off of that? And some are going against this by saying that the game's price should be lower since there isn't any multiplayer, but let's at least be thankful they're not Naughty Dog. While yes, The Last of Us on PS5 is a massive graphical overhaul, and takes advantage of the console's hardware, the game has its multiplayer missing and it was still priced at 70 bucks. I guess the $40 is for the accessibility features, updated visuals, and costumes? I don't know. Now let me get back to the title of this video, because I think it illustrates the most important point that I'm trying to make. I finished Red Dead Redemption 2 some time ago, and that game has one of the most interesting characters ever written in the game. The game is also set as a prequel to the first Red Dead, which I've only heard and seen of, but never actually played. And I'm under the impression that while reviews and video essays may do games justice or intentional disservice, they still undersell the experience that they provide. That's why I am glad that this game is at least getting released on PS4. And to those that are pissed that the PS4 version is being priced for what it is, simply don't fucking buy it. If you already have the PS3 version, or have an Xbox 360 or newer and can buy Red Dead Redemption, just get it there. Don't buy the same experience when you can get into that experience already. Now the reason I exclude the Switch version is because of its portability, as I believe that if the game runs well, it's one that gamers might carry on them in the regular. Consoles only have so much to give at their core in comparison to each other, but the Switch is an exception since you can play games on the go, and most of the games in their catalog are pretty good according to many. So as pissed as some of us may be for how this board is being handled, let's be grateful that we have many people that can now experience this game firsthand, myself included. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.